Whoa! Hello everyone, Zolmamus here, and welcome to Opeth Worst to Best. This is another band that needs no introduction because of their reputation within Prog, the Prog Sphere. And this this episode is brought to you by Tim Hortons. It's not, by the way. It's not brought to you by Tim Hortons. That would be awesome, though. Anyway, we're talking about Opeth. And need I say it? Opeth has never had a bad album. And I'm going to stick to that to my grave. There is not one bad Opeth album. All of them are either okay or they're brilliant. Or okay being in between okay and good. Right? Okay, so without further ado, and I say that way too much. Let's move on. Let's move <laughs> to number 13, arguably their worst album. And this might be a little controversial, but I don't care. Number 13. Orchid released in 1995. Okay, I feel like I had to put this one here. This album has, oh boy, has a huge consistency issue. All the songs, except for Silhouette and Requiem, are just totally different styles. And every song shares the same format, except for Silhouette and Requiem. They have a balance in between extreme to soft. And this album has the less soft moments, and Silhouette and Requiem just are the two that just make this album both consistent and inconsistent at the same time. It's a weird conflicting notion that just continues down here. Now, I still find this album enjoyable and listenable because of its songwriting aspect, but overall, I feel like I had to put this at the bottom of the barrel. So, let's move on to number 12. Deliverance, released in 2002. <laughs> People are gonna rip me apart for this one. Everything on this album is very good. Pretty damn good. <laughs> it's raw, it's heavy, but the thing is, is that that ending is atrocious. The ending is absolutely terrible. There is no need for By the Pain I See in Others ending to be nearly as long as it was. It was about five minutes too long, even though it was really about three and a half minutes too long. Deliverance had probably the worst ending I've heard to an album. It That's why it's at number 12. But, and I'll give it this, it wasn't so bad that it was anticlimactic. It, it was still on the anticlimactic side, but it was a lot less anticlimactic than a lot of other albums that I've heard in my life. Uh, I just feel like they dragged it on for way too long, and it just sank this album completely. This album also suffers from being too consistent. Um, unlike Orchid, this one is just, just keeps the same tone going throughout the entirety of the album, which is a falling point for this album, but... Let's move on to number 11. Morning Rise, released in 1996. Their sophomore album. Their sophomore album. This album has a lot of the, of the songs that people just love by this band, such as um, Black Rose Immortal. A lot of people love that song, and I can see why. It is really long. I feel like they dragged it out a little bit, the song could have easily been cut a little bit, and the song could have been just as good, if not better, with all that dragging that they did on this song. This album is like the last two albums, it suffers from a consistency issue. After a while, you just feel like you've heard all these songs before, and you've only listened to their debut. So, let's move on to number 10. Heritage released in 2011. Their turn, their turn to Prague. Um, this is their turn to the progressive rock side of music, and I applaud them for changing their style from that death metal style to their more modern progressive rock style. 
Now, this is at the top of the bottom four because of how well done they did this change in styles. This album has a lot of really great moments, such as the first two tracks, Heritage and The Devil's or Orchard. It also has songs that I can't really understand the style of, such as Hacks Process. I don't know if I'm um, pronouncing that right, but I still like that song, by the way. This album has a lot of ups and downs, and it suffers from an inconsistency issue. Which, when I say inconsistency, I mean that almost everything sounds too different. Which is not what you want. If it's consistent, then it sounds too similar. Does that help? Okay. I'm just wavering in between styles and it doesn't work too well on this album. Either way, I still like it. It's fantastic. I applaud their turn to prog. Which is great. Um... I, I applaud their turn to Prague, though. That, that's fantastic stuff. So let's carry on. Number nine. Sorceress, released in 2016. Their second last album to be have, to have been released. Um, now, this one has amazing moments in almost, in almost every song. But this album is the definition of inconsistent. In between songs, the style changes incredibly fast, and it is incredibly hard to keep up with. The only songs I could actually listen to without getting a headache from processing where we were, and you know, um, were Willow, Willow the Wisp, um, the starting track, uh, Era, Sorceress, title tracks, and that's pretty much it. All these songs were had really great riffs and interesting instrumentation, which is why I put it at number nine. So, number eight. My Arms, Your Herds, released in 1998. Okay, this part of the list from eight to six and three to one were the hardest choices I had to make on this list. But I had to put this one at the bottom of the of those three. Okay, let me explain. Start to finish, it doesn't suffer from being too inconsistent or being too consistent. This album is heavy and really, really good. End to end, it's a really great end to end listen. The bleeding in between tracks is just really well done. With prologue in April, in April ethereal, to when, and that carries on to the Amen Corner, and of course Demon of the Fall, which is a fan favorite for a reason. It's an, it's it's an it's the masterpiece on this album, with extremely great chord progressions and great lyrics. Of course, this album suffer has um, issues, such as. This album is only good. And that's pretty much it. There's nothing fantastic, there's nothing bad, it's just a good album. There's no real standout tracks except for probably, um, you know, uh, Demon of the Fall. Which is pretty much all it has going for- oh, sheesh. Um, this album... That's just, it's, that's all I can say about it. It's, it's just a good album. Overall, the album just didn't have any fantastic tracks. So, number seven. Encada Venenum, released in 2019. Ooh, their last album to be released thus far. Great. I'm a fan. It is, it is inconsistent. But, this album is really dark, and I really like it. It's probably their darkest album to date, other than Damnation. This album is all is good all the way through, but just like My Arms Are Hers, that's all it is. It's just good. Um, the reason why I put this over My Arms Are Hers is because of the mood this album generates. This, The album just has a dark atmosphere like Damnation. Speaking of... 
Damnation released in 2003. Ooh, now this is at the top of those uh, between 8 and 6. But this is the order I've chosen. My Arms Your Hearse, um, Incauda Veninum, and then Damnation. This is uh, great all the way through. Had keyboard heavy and dark as hell. This album, overall, in terms of songwriting, takes the edge over Encounter Venom and My Arms Are Hers. Of course, it has issues such as I feel this album ended twice. Uh, ending credits and weakness kind of end each other off. I don't know. And whilst ending the album at the same time, I don't know. This, uh, I feel like they ripped off Camel a little bit there too. I, look, I love Ki I love Camel, but I feel like they ripped it off a little bit. Originality is a little bit to be desired in that one song. So. But I love this album. Through and through, fantastic album. I just think that they ended it twice. I don't know if that makes any sense. So, the top five. Let's move on. Number five. <laughs> Watershed, released in 2008. <laughs> Man, some people are gonna hate this. This album showed the end of the death metal era in Opeth. Now, right off the bat, Burden, fantastic song, amazing chords, and well sung vocals and lyrics. Coil, Air Apparent, The Lotus Eater, Hex Omega, just amazing tracks with unique chord progressions. I feel like I enjoyed the albums higher up on the list a little bit more than this album, but this is still an amazing album, so let's move on to number four. Pale Communion, released in 2014. I know what you guys are gonna say. <laughs> this deserves to be lower in the list. <laughs> Hear me out. This is their best modern prog album for sure, and I just love it. This album is the definition of modern prog, and every song on this album works. Moon Below, Sun Above is a stellar track with everything flowing together, great lyrics, fantastic mix, and great vocals. Every song on here just keeps me interested, but I feel like the, the top three from here just hit me a little bit harder than everything else. So, number three. By the two style beckons, the damsel fair. Still Life, released in 1999. Oh my god, I hate myself for putting this a third, but I, I feel like I had to. Oh man. All these three basically tie, are, they're basically tied for me. It would be impossible for me to list these off and say exactly why these albums are where they are. It, it's just, uh, man. This album is absolutely, is an absolute treasure for me. Yeah, it's the first Opeth album I listened to. It was my introduction to progressive death metal and it led me to the next album. Blackwater Park released in 2001. Again, I hate myself for this, for placing it here, but this and Still Life and number one were all tied. The style on all these albums work for me. Well, you know what number one is. Style, let's, let's just get it over with. Number one. Ghost Reveries, released in 2005. I feel this album deserves to be at number one because of its perfect inconsistencies. It does waver, but the wavering in between styles is perfect and tasteful on this album. Of course, that can be said for Still Life and Blackwater Park, but I just feel that this album, even if it is in a microscopic amount, does the inconsistent style better than all than the previous two. 
Either way, that was my worst to best. What did you guys think? Was it bad? Was it good? You guys let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.